All right, guys, I just want to bring you this article I found pretty interesting. Um, it's tax season. So this article on Forbes.com says, If you held Bitcoin in 2017, put your tax return on extension. The IRS has issued a reminder about the reporting requirements for virtual currency transactions. It's a strong reminder. Taxpayers who do not properly report income tax consequences of virtual currency transactions can be audited for those transactions and, when appropriate, can be liable for penalties and interest. In a more extreme situation, taxpayers could be subject to criminal prosecution for failing to properly report the income tax consequences of virtual currency transactions. Criminal charges could include tax evasion and filing of false tax return. Anyone convicted of tax evasion is subject to a prison term up to five years and a fine of up to $250,000. Anyone convicted of filing a false return is subject to a prison term of up to three years and a fine of up to $250,000. So if you were fooling with virtual currencies last year and you are getting ready to do your return, pay attention and I'll see if I can help keep you out of prison, which truthfully is very remotely possible. And I'll explain why I think it's best to file an extension if you held bitcoins in 2017. What the IRS is talking about. The IRS concerns itself with virtual currencies that are used for real-world transactions. Don't worry so much about your world of Warcraft gold. CornMarketCap.com tracks 1,582 different cryptocurrencies as of yesterday. <clears throat> that was 3 24 evening. They range in market capitalization from Bitcoins, which are collectively worth over $151 billion, to Dibcoins, which are worth over $1,000, all 5 million of them. Dibcoin is number 1,271 on the list. The balance apparently do not have to be discernible market capitalization. There are over 100 currencies with market capitalization over $100 million. Bitcoin has the daily transaction volume of $6 billion. There are 19 currencies with daily transaction volume over $100 million. So there's a lot going on there. A lot of it is just Bitcoin, but by no means all. As I write this, five top currencies in market capitalization are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin, meaning no disrespect to its 15 other plus brothers and sister currencies, I pretty much will assume you have been fooling with Bitcoin. As it happens, at least for 2017, that also means you have to consider Bitcoin Cash. Wait till we get to the fork to consider this latter. Okay, what is virtual currency? I spent some time speaking with Perry Wooden, who is the Chief Strategist Officer of Hashchain Technology, which recently acquired Node40. The conclusion I've reached is that I'm not even going to try to explain how it is Bitcoins and other virtual currencies based on the blockchain work. All right. So if you want to read about Satoshi Nakamoto, proof of work, Byzantine generals, and elliptic curves, you can hunt around elsewhere. Here is the explanation on the Bitcoin site that tells us all what we need to know. From a user perspective, Bitcoin is nothing more than a mobile app or a computer program that provides personal Bitcoin wallet and users to send and receive Bitcoins with them. This is how Bitcoin works for most users. But behind the scenes, the Bitcoin network is sharing a public ledger called the blockchain. This ledger contains every transaction ever processed, allowing the user's computer to verify the validity of each transaction. The authenticity of each transaction is protected by digital signatures corresponding to the sending addresses, allowing all users to have full control over sending Bitcoins from their own Bitcoin addresses. In addition, anyone can process transactions using the computed power of specialized hardware and earn a reward in Bitcoins for the service. This is often called mining. Who's going to know? You and I and everybody we know are all diligent in tax compliance. <laughs> we will report our Bitcoin transactions because it's the right thing to do. There are other people out there, though, that need a stronger incentive. Here is the reason why using Bitcoins like they were untraceable cash is really, really dumb. 
From that explanation above, we have the Bitcoin network is sharing a public ledger, which is called blockchain. The ledger contains every transaction ever processed, allowing the user's computer to verify the validity of each transaction. Every blockchain transaction, I mean Bitcoin transaction ever is publicly available forever. It is true that you are anonymous. Whoever owns wallet so-and-so that transferred 10.5 Bitcoins on March 24, 2018 probably thinks it's all private. But if any of the people on the other side of the transaction know that old blah 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 is actually my friend James and rat him out to the IRS which is likely given some of the people James associates with the IRS will be able to learn about the, all the 619 bitcoins that came and went from that account at current values that is over five million dollars Perry told me that the IRS is already working on it if you fail to report large amounts of gross income the statute of limitations on your tax return is extendable from three years to six if you don't file at all, the statute is forever. Hmm. All your transactions on the blockchain are also easily accessible forever. It is just a matter of connecting them to you. The rules. The IRS ruling referred to in the warning notice 2014-21 to 21 really boils down to two things. First, Bitcoins are not tax fairy dust. If somebody pays you in Bitcoin instead of dollars or euros or whatever, you have exactly the same type of income as you would have if it was more conventional. Second, Bitcoins and all of the other virtual currencies are property. That means they are exchanged for something else, including money. You have to recognize gain and possible loss. That is a real pain if you have a lot of transactions. It is particularly difficult for you to use Bitcoins to buy things. If you have been dealing in Bitcoins, though, you need to at least give it a shot. And here is where the blockchain comes in handy. Okay? You send the public identity of your accounts to Node40 or Bitcoin Tax or Libertax, and they produce capital gain schedule for you. Perry says you should definitely use Node40. They are better because they spe use specific identification. He admitted that if... I called up any other companies. There are more than three I mentioned. There will be a story about why they are better. My advice at this point is to shop around and do an assessment as to whether the report you get seems to make sense. Here's the thing. If you go to this trouble and report something, you will probably be in the top tier when it comes to compliance. If your transaction volume is not very high, you should be able to do it yourself. And then there is the hard fork. Bitcoin Cash resulted from difference in opinion on how to run blockchain some to do with scaling maybe you can find a byzantine 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 okay whatever that says <laughs> byzantine general that can explain it to you here's the important thing anyone who held bitcoin at the time bitcoin cash was created became owners of bitcoin cash this means that Bitcoin holders of blockchain 478558 August 1st, 2017 at 13.16 UTC have the same amount of Bitcoin cash they had in Bitcoin at the time. If your Bitcoins are stored on a third party such as an exchange, you must inquire with them about your Bitcoin cash. If you owned your Bitcoin through an exchange, you might want to jump through some hoops. Perry Wooden has talked to quite a few big four top 10 con accountants and is convinced that the recipe for Bitcoin Cash was a taxable transaction. Most of this art most of the articles that I have found written since August seem to support that view. According to one dynamic post, the income pickup would be 9.5% of the value of your Bitcoins at the fork, which works out to 266 per Bitcoin Cash unit. Jeff John Roberts in Fortune expressed a similar view, as does fellow Forbes contributor Robert Green. Are they right about the income pickup? Thanks to my sensible client base, I was blissfully unaware of the fork that created Bitcoin Cash until I spoke with Perry Wooden. If the IRS had actually issued any sort of ruling or pronouncement on the subject, it would have been better. It would have been. It would not have been the case. It has not. 
an income pickup at the time of the fork based on the value then given you basis in your Bitcoin Cash equal to the income recognized as the holding period that starts on August 1st does, does seem like a reasonable answer. I could come up with other answers though and you will find commentary on why those answers are wrong but no authority. I reached out to my brain trust on this one and struck gold with Professor Adam Chodoro. IRS has asked for comments so that it can issue some guidance on hard forks. There is no authority that obviously applies, and a number of options exist. In large part, the answer depends what analogies activity best applies. Hmm. For instance, we look at the new coins received as interest on existing assets. Hard forks should produce income at the moment of the fork. In contrast, if we think of it more as a stock split, it looks more like a change in form of the ownership and not the receipt of something new. My sense is that the former is more accurate than the latter at, as a description of what is happening. But the IRS can control the outcome by declaring that it will adopt one analogy over the other. Hard forks present a number of issues that make the interest analogy more difficult than might initially appear. It is sometimes not clear what the value of the new coins are at the moment of the split. It takes the market some time to set value. In addition, in some cases, the taxpayer must take steps to claim the coins. What should happen if the taxpayer effectively disavows a coin <clears throat> Excuse me. This avows a coin by not claiming them. The stock split analogy is also difficult because the new coins are actually different from the original. It is not as if the taxpayer now has two and a half coins instead of one full coin. The taxpayer has the original coin and something new. Practical considerations may be the most important element determining what the rule should be. For instance, to avoid having to allocate basis from old to new coins or determine value at the time of the split, the best answer would be to declare that the hard fork is a realization and recognition event, but the value of the new coin is zero. That triggers the gain of zero and sets the basis at zero. It also starts the clock on a holding period. If taxpayers start using hard forks in weird ways, that make these rules unworkable, we can always revisit the rule. If I had to guess, the IRS will go with a rule like this, at least in the short run, until it gains more experience and sees how taxpayers respond to such rule. That said, there is no obviously correct answer and the IRS could surprise us all. Karen Hawkins, chair of the ABA tax section, wrote to the IRS acting commissioner on March 19, 2018, suggesting a safe harbor, which would be an income pickup of zero with zero basis and a holding period starting at the date of the fork, of the hard fork. That seems like a reasonable answer, but again, it's not authority. How long will it take for the IRS to get around to issuing something? Too long to react to the ruling by April 17th but we can hope there might be something by October 15th when extended returns are due. What should you do? If you want to be compliant in Bitcoin, Bitcoin cash transactions are material to your return. Filing an extension form 4868 is really your best option. If you can afford to, pay in the estimated tax that is based on the worst case scenario on how the IRS might rule, then forget about it and check back in August or September. If there's still no word from the IRS, there will be a, at least a lot more commentary and you will probably be able to find a reasonable, well-supported option that you will find most congenial. If you have some sort of resistance to filing an extension, just get over it. All right, so that was... That was his advice for filing an extension this year on your taxes pertaining to Bitcoin and the hard forks and cryptocurrencies. So I just wanted to bring you that because it is tax time. We are coming up on the deadline um, next month, and it's an important thing that everyone's going to have to face. So there you have it, guys. All right. Thank you, and have a beautiful day. back
trying to warn you that's not just him grinning.